Less than two years ago, Fall River school officials broke ground on a new BMC Durfee High School. Skip ahead to summer 2020 and the project is just past the 50% mark. The structure is built, the brick walls are being bonded, and finishing work has already begun in the southernmost parts of the building. With a $263 million price tag, Durfee 3.0 is a 400,000 square foot architectural marvel, a 21st century learning space designed with an ode to our past and our future in mind. And that's just the new structure. Add in the over 100,000 square feet of renovations to the field house and pool, and the project surpasses 500,000 square feet of construction. That's the size of a small shopping mall. Senior project manager Adam Keen led members of our FRED TV staff on an hour-long tour of the new high school. As we began at the northeast entrance, we quickly realized just how massive this new building really is. Here are some of the highlights from the tour. This area we're in right now is the first floor dining area. So you got a lot of kids, uh, 2,470 is what the school is built for. And they, um, at, during dining, crowd control can be uh, challenging, right? So what they, uh, part of the design had breaking up the uh, food service into two dining areas. This is first floor and there's a second one above us. In addition to having split dining halls, there will be a new state-of-the-art commercial kitchen where food will not only be prepared for Durfee, but for four other schools as well. As we move to the north and west of the dining hall, we find the new 750 stadium seat theater. Hundreds of talented singers, actors, and musicians perform in the Nagel Auditorium every year. And now this new, currently unnamed, fully handicap accessible space will be the home for future performances, complete with new lighting, sound, and a full fly tower above the stage. Now you may recall our live coverage of the topping off ceremony last November to celebrate the placing of the final steel beams on this building. Well, those were signed by students, staff, and dignitaries. And to preserve that piece of history, those beams were not sprayed with fireproof foam and can be seen hanging in the rafters. Pretty cool. Okay, we'll continue now south down the back hallway as we arrive at one of our favorite spots, the new Durfee Pride Atrium that runs east to west. An open concept hub where all three floors are visible with tons of natural light shining in from two courtyards, one to the north and one to the south. The atrium splits the building and is the, um, probably the biggest uh, and maybe the most important um, architectural element of the building. But what you can see here is very high space. These will be pedestrian corridors up here with glass handrails. You can see the, uh, the P-LAM wood framing, right? It's, most of it is protected, right, under this Tyvek here, if you will. But some of it is coming out, right, or hanging out. And that gives you an idea of what the look is. The look is supposed to make it kind of feel like a mill in a certain uh, respect. But um, be a very, uh, a very uh, cool space. Lots of natural light, huge curtain wall elements. Um, over here that are taking place. So what we see here is the larger of two courtyards. And the courtyards serve a couple of purposes. One is they allow light, natural light, into the corridors, which are double loaded on either side. Uh, that pile of granite right there is, uh, uh, is Fall River granite. It's seawall that was taken from the Pier Development Project and donated to the project. So what you'll see here is, is kind of the most developed looks of what the exterior wall is gonna look like from the outside. So this, this precast material is called shoulder ice. Um, you know, the, the, the brick of course above it, those are our punched windows in place. If you notice, they're open, so for the first time in a long time, Durfee's gonna have operable windows. You'll notice they, they, by design, by code, they only open four inches.
What we have out here we call the Twin Towers. To the left is the observatory, so there'll be a new observatory there. Um, the observatory dome is new. Uh, the telescope is the historic Durfee telescope from the original Rock Street. It was at this high school. Um, it was at, in its time in 1890 something. It was a Rolls Royce of a telescope. Very few in the country. Uh, the lens specifically is uh, uh, highly valuable, right? The other schools that have it are places like Harvard University and Yale. Uh, very, uh, it was a very high-end instrument in its time and still very functional, working with a um, uh, astronomist uh, who was actually a former Fall River resident uh, who now lives in New Mexico. He's helped us recondition it and um, he'll help us reinstall it someday, but there will be an astronomy program that actually uses it but we're gonna add technology to it. We'll be able to hook up electronics, or a camera, if you will, to the telescope. So when celestial events are happening at night, like an eclipse or something, and kids are normally home, we'll be able to record that event and replay it the next day. Really, I think we're really excited about that. Um, over to this side, or the other half of the Twin Towers, is the Bell Tower. And, and in that tower will go the historic Durfee Bells. Formerly, the bells were in the, uh, the bell tower built by the Bell Committee uh, about 20 years ago. The bell tower monument is gonna be, was relocated to the backside of the playing field. Uh, and will stay there as a monument to that group. But the historic bells will go back into this tower. Kind of like I was talking about with Gary, We worked very closely with the late Les Corey, um, who was uh, instrumental in both saving the bells, but also working with us to get the bells here. So there will be a monument to the bells uh, in landscaping. The pavers that were around the monument will go right out front here. There'll be pedestals that'll um, uh, be dedicated to the bells and the bells committee. The bells, once reinstalled, will be electronically controllable. So, for example, when the Hilltoppers score a touchdown on Friday night, the scoreboard operator could actually activate the bells. I'd say that's got a nice ring to it. Okay, we'll continue now to the southernmost part of the building. We'll pass by the future administrative offices through the new special education hallway, and we'll bang a right and head west through the new Vogue Tech hallway with the new Fred TV, FRG TV studio space on the left. Once all the sheetrock is up, we'll get a more in-depth look at our future home on the next tour. That leads us to our next stop, the pool and the field house. So brand new, brand new pool, the last pool uh, leaked. Uh, some people would say from the day it was put in. Uh, it was also um, four inches short, which made it non-MIAA. Uh, non-regulation, um, so you could never have a true home meet. Uh, this pool is long enough and deep enough for diving. That was another requirement. You need to get about a, I think about a foot and a half deeper to accommodate that. But um, brand new vessel, what you see now is a flood test, right? So you make, we're making sure that it holds water. We need to make sure that we have a tight vessel before we pour the apron and start building this area back. Now in the field house, cosmetically you won't notice too many differences at this time. However, what's to come is rather exciting. New HVAC, yes, that means heating and air conditioning. New bleachers, new scoreboard, new floor, and much more. Due to the COVID-19 shutdown, this part of the project is actually ahead of schedule. Our last stop takes us upstairs to one of the core academic hallways. This is on the southwest side of the new structure. And one of the first things you'll notice is just how open the halls are compared to the existing Durfee. Doors are not set back three to six feet from the hall, but rather moved forward to help preserve linear sight lines for security purposes. As we enter one of the more completed classrooms, the first thing we notice were the multiple windows that, again, open, and let in plenty of natural light. 
And from a technology standpoint, Adam tells us that each classroom will have a wall-mounted 75-inch monitor complete with online connectivity for streaming services such as Apple TV. There's all this and so much more that we'll be showing you as this project progresses as we get closer and closer to the grand opening of Durfee 3.0. Right now, as you can see, it's coming along nicely and it is expected to be open in less than a year by the end of May 2021 with the first classes hopefully taking place in September of 2021. We're hoping to be back for another tour in just a couple months when the project hits the 75% complete milestone.